Don Pablo El Chapo, with these guys dead or in prison, you probably think it's all over for the drug cartels, but nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, with the old heads gone, the new cartel leaders are even more brutal and quite sophisticated, which is why they have remained active, even to this day. With brute force, money and connections as high as the CIA, many ambitious and ruthless people have risen to the top of the cartel business. And in today's video, we'll be looking at nine of the most brutal cartel leaders still active today. Christy Kinahan Born March 23, 1957, Christy Kinahan would grow to become a young father who yearned for a life beyond the confines of his taxicab. A hunger for wealth and power consumed him, propelling him to become an international crime boss, thus earning himself the notorious moniker of the Dapper Don. But how did it all start? Kinahan's ascent to power traces back to the dark streets of Dublin, where a devastating heroin epidemic wreaked havoc in the early 1980s. Notorious Irish drug dealer Larry Dunn flooded the city's veins with Afghan heroin, creating a generation of young addicts. It was amidst this chaos that Kinahan saw his opportunity in 1983. This was when Dunn, controlling a staggering 95% of Ireland's heroin trade, was apprehended and later sentenced to 14 years in prison for drug trafficking. With Dunn out of the picture, Kinahan seized the moment. He abandoned his life as a mere taxi driver to embark on a path paved with petty crimes, car theft, burglary, and check fraud. By 1986, he had become Ireland's most prominent heroin supplier. Operating from a modest apartment in a Dublin suburb, Kinahan posed as an English businessman, using the space as a hub to store and distribute massive quantities of heroin to street dealers. Former Garda Assistant Commissioner O'Sullivan reveals, Chris Kinahan saw the profits, so he made efforts to establish himself as a kingpin and supplier, albeit a silent one in the heroin trade. In 1986, Kinahan's empire was momentarily shattered when he was caught in possession of a staggering $150,000 worth of heroin, and the Irish Times labelled it a very large quantity at the time, leading to a six-year prison sentence. But incarceration proved incapable of silencing the ambitious Kinahan. Behind prison walls, he obtained his own computer, using it to refine his skills as an international drug trafficker. Unbeknownst to his captors, the dapper Don was honing his criminal empire, making connections and forging alliances that would extend far beyond the prison walls. So once he served his prison term and was out, he got even bigger. However, the veil of secrecy surrounding Christy Kinahan and his two sons was shattered when a staggering $15 million bounty was announced. This joint operation, orchestrated by the US, Ireland's Angada Shiokana, and the UK's National Crime Agency, aimed to bring the Kinahans to justice. The Kinahan cartel showed its level of violence in the Regency Hotel attack of 2016 during a clash with a rival Irish gang. However, during the very violent altercation, Daniel Kinahan narrowly escaped escaped a guerrilla-style assassination attempt. The rival Irish gang, led by the notorious Jerry the Monk Hutch, even managed to kill Kinahan cartel Lieutenant David Byrne in a hail of bullets. Of course, retaliation came swiftly, as the Kinahans unleashed a brutal wave of vengeance upon Dublin. The Irish Sun reports that nine lives, including Eddie Hutch, the brother of their rival gang's leader, were ruthlessly murdered in the cartel's ruthless quest for retribution. The streets ran red with blood, as the Kinahans sought to send a chilling message to anyone who dared challenge their authority. But look, the shocking thing about the Kinahan cartel is that, despite the crimes and all the violence, no criminal charges have been brought against the Kinahans in an Ireland court. Nevertheless, the generous reward stands as a testament to the international community's commitment to combating the Kinahan cartel's participation in transnational organized crime. The enigmatic figure at the center of it all, Daniel Kinahan, is believed to orchestrate the sprawling criminal enterprise from the safe confines of Dubai. With no extradition treaty in place between Dubai and Ireland, the Kinahans have so far managed to evade accountability within the confines of a courtroom. Yulan Adonai Achaga Karias. Born on February 13, 1982, Yulan Adonai Archaga Karayas emerged as a formidable figure in the criminal underworld. He earned his place on the FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list on November 3, 2021. This Honduran fugitive is the alleged leader of the notorious MS-13 gang in the country, and his crimes range from racketeering, narcotics trafficking, and firearms offenses that have left a trail of chaos and destruction in his wake. Not much is known about the childhood of this man, or how. He got into the MS-13. However, Archaga Karayas allegedly oversaw the operations of the MS-13 throughout Honduras. It is believed that he orchestrates the flow of firearms, narcotics, and cash to gang members operating within the US, fueling the gang's criminal activities. Moreover, he is suspected of orchestrating the ruthless murders of rival gang members. Despite the collective efforts to bring him to justice, authorities believe that Archaga Karayas remains elusive, still lurking within the borders of Honduras. His ability to evade capture 
has only amplified his notoriety, propelling him further into the spotlight of law enforcement agencies worldwide. In a remarkable turn of events, Artiga Karayas assumed the position of the 526th fugitive to be added to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list in 2021. Taking the spot previously held by American fugitive Robert William Fisher, he swiftly became the focus of intense manhunt efforts. The FBI offered a staggering reward of up to $100,000 for any information that could lead to his capture. This year, the United States federal government escalated its efforts to capture him. Indeed, the U.S. Department of State Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs placed an increased bounty of $5 million on his head. Simultaneously, the U.S. Department of the Treasury Office of Foreign Assets Control sanctioned him by placing him on the specially designated Nationals and Blocked Persons list, acting upon Executive Order 13581. By now, you can tell that Archaga Karias's capture would not be without its fair share of drama if it were to ever happen. After all, in 2015, he was apprehended and imprisoned in Honduras after getting convicted of money laundering and illicit association. However, on February 13, 2020, a shocking turn of events unfolded as he left prison under tight security to attend a court hearing in El Progreso. No one knew that a meticulously planned operation was underway, and so, in a hail of bullets, an audacious MS-13 squad stormed the scene, orchestrating his escape with military-like precision. Security footage revealed the cunning strategy employed with the use of a decoy prisoner and a man disguised in a black tunic, concealing not only his identity, but also a cache of weapons and ammunition. The brazen escape cemented Archega Karius's reputation as a criminal mastermind. The Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs responded swiftly, announcing a $5 million reward for any information leading to his arrest and conviction. The hunt for Yulan Adonai Archaga Karias continues, a relentless pursuit that spans borders and commands the attention of law enforcement agencies determined to dismantle the power of MS-13 and its stronghold. Rommel Pascua Cipriano Born in 1997, Rommel Pascua Cipriano emerges as a formidable figure within the treacherous world of drug cartels. Cipriano is a member of the infamous Sinaloa cartel, and he's in charge of the drug distribution in California. This makes him a very dangerous individual, especially considering how the Sinaloa cartel has been expanding and its increased brutality. Being such a young guy, it's worrisome to think what Cipriano might have done to have risen up the ranks so fast. And this is where it gets interesting because not much about Rommel Pascua Cipriano is known. While his leaders and probably role models such as Pablo Escobar loved the spotlight, he has managed to stay clear of it, and that's probably why he has not been caught. Right now, Cipriano is wanted by the DEA, the state of Texas, and so on. Even at such a young age, Cipriano is among the most wanted individuals in the United States. Operating from his base in California, he conducts the cartel's business with calculated precision. The Sinaloa cartel, known for its expansive network, has infiltrated various corners of society. Their unyielding pursuit of power drives them to unimaginable lengths, ensuring their steady ascent in the criminal underworld. Cipriano, specifically entrusted with overseeing the distribution of white powder on the west coast, has already begun his ascent up the ranks of the cartel. He commands a legion of loyal followers who wreak havoc and propagate violence, staunchly protecting him and the cartel's interests. While he remains on the run, skillfully evading the clutches of the DEA, his potential within the Sinaloa network is boundless. With each passing day, the cartel grows more potent and influential on American soil. Cipriano personifies the perilous reality of narcotics gangs. Despite his youth, he embodies the cold-hearted nature of those who operate within this ruthless realm. His presence serves as a stark reminder of the inherent danger and brutality inherent in the narcotics trade. The tendrils of the Sinaloa cartel reach far and wide, perpetuating a reign of terror that poses a significant threat to societal order. As law, enforcement agencies continue their tireless pursuit of Rommel Pascua Cipriano. His notoriety grows, elevating him to an emblematic figure of the dark underbelly of narcotics gangs. The story of this young enforcer serves as a chilling testament to the depths to which these criminal organizations are willing to descend, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in their wake. Eduardo Almanza Morales Eduardo Almanza Morales known by the alias El Gori II, is a formidable figure in the Mexican drug trade, affiliated with the notorious Los Zetas cartel. Notably, Eduardo Almanza Morales is part of a family deeply entwined in the drug trade. His brothers, Ricardo Almanza Morales, a.k.a. El Gori Wust, and Raimundo Almanza Morales, a.k.a. El Gori III, made the list of names on Mexico's most wanted drug lords list. Ricardo met his end at the hands of Mexican authorities on the 4th of December 2009, while Raimundo was apprehended on the 22nd of May 
2009. Together with Octavio, another brother, they have been accused of orchestrating the executions of General Mauro Enrique Tello Quinones in Cancun and General Juan Espaza Garcia in Garcia, Nuevo León. Before joining forces with the Gulf Cartel and eventually the violent faction Los Zetas, Almanza Morales had a background in Mexico's armed forces, where he received military training. Serving as a corporal, he enlisted in the Mexican army in 1997, and his military involvement concluded on the 16th of October, 2003, according to Historias del Narco. Since that time, he has been involved in the cartel business. In March 2009, he was designated as one of Mexico's 37 most wanted drug lords by the Procuraduría General de la Republica, which is the country equivalent of an attorney general's office. Almanza Morales was implicated in the smuggling of illicit drugs from Belize and Guatemala into Mexico on behalf of the Gulf Cartel. Reports have surfaced regarding his fate, with some suggesting that he met his demise during a violent clash with Mexican law enforcement in December 2009. However, the Mexican Procuraduría General de la Republica continued to list him as wanted as of the 3rd of March 2013. The Mexican government offered a reward of 15 million Mexican pesos, equivalent to approximately one 1.2 million US dollars for any information leading to his capture. The circumstances surrounding Eduardo Almanza Morales's demise remain clouded in uncertainty. Conflicting reports have emerged, complicating the narrative. While some sources claim he was killed in a shootout with Mexican law enforcement in December 2009, others, including the respected Mexican newspaper Milenio and La Policiaca, suggest he is still at large. Such discrepancies may stem from confusion among reporting agencies, as Eduardo Almanza Morales shares the same family name as his brothers, leading to a tangled web of information. The enigma of Eduardo Almanza Morales lingers, shrouding the truth in the shadows. Whether he met his fate years ago or continues to evade capture, his legacy serves as a stark reminder of the pervasive power and dangers associated with the Mexican drug trade. The pursuit of justice against individuals like him represents an ongoing battle to dismantle criminal networks and restore peace to afflicted communities. Shashikala Ramesh Patankar Shashikala Ramesh Patankar, also known as Baby, is a notorious figure in Mumbai's drug underworld. Despite her unassuming appearance, she played a significant role in the city's drug circuit, with a reputation for sending a large number of drug addicts to rehab. Originally, Shashikala sold milk bottles in Worli, South Mumbai, along with her brothers who worked as drivers. However, her life took a very dark path when she met a local drug peddler in 1985. This encounter led her to venture into the drug trade. It is believed that her decision was influenced by her husband and brother, both of whom were drug addicts. She took charge of supplying drugs to them and gradually became deeply involved in narcotics. In 2000, Shashikala established connections with drug dealers from Rajasthan and started smuggling contraband into Mumbai. She employed a clever tactic by hiding drugs on her stomach, concealed beneath layers of clothing, as she boldly transported them via trains. Her criminal activities expanded, and there were rumors of her having connections within the Mumbai police. Between 2000 and 2002, the Mumbai police filed three cases against her for narcotics possession. Despite being arrested each time, she managed to secure bail and evade justice. After her second release, she took an unexpected turn in her criminal journey and became a police informer. A lookout notice was issued for her in connection with the arrest of Constable Dharmaraj Kaloka in a drug possession case. As a middlewoman, Shashikala procured drugs from dealers to sell in Mumbai. She would retain a portion of the pure narcotics for herself while diluting the rest with inferior substances. She claimed the diluted drugs were unsellable due to their poor quality and would tip off the police, leading to the arrest of the unsuspecting dealers. This method earned her a fearsome reputation, and she accumulated significant wealth from her narcotics business. How much wealth did she accumulate? Well, it is believed that Shashikala has made up to $12.2 million doing the drug business within four years. And now that she's been running the business for over 15 years, one can only wonder how much money she has made. In 2015, Shashikala was caught, but she was subsequently released. However, her troubles continued to mount. The Dadar police recorded the statement of her nephew, Manish Magonka, who accused her of being involved in his mother's murder in 1993, but so far, nothing has happened on that end. Currently, her whereabouts are unknown, leaving her status and future uncertain. Los Chapitos, collectively known as Los Chapitos or Los Menores, the miners, Ovidio and Ivan, along with their siblings, have become targets for both US and Mexican authorities. The Department of Justice charged Ovidio and Joaquin Guzman Lopez with drug trafficking in February, sparking a manhunt. 
While El Chapo is believed to have around 15 official sons, rumors suggest that the actual number may be higher, potentially reaching 24 offspring. Most of his children are not involved in cartel activities, but at least four are considered key players. Since their father's imprisonment, these sons have faced ongoing challenges to their power within the Sinaloa cartel. They are believed to control the drug trade in various Sinaloan cities, including Culiacan, Mazatlan, and Guamuchil, and employ groups of gunmen such as Los Demonios, aka the Demons, to enforce their authority. The four sons of El Chapo that make up the Los Chapitos are as follows. Ovidio Guzman Lopez, known as El Raton, or the Mouse, Ovidio is the son of El Chapo's second marriage and has been wanted for several years. He was reportedly captured by authorities during the Culiacan incident, but due to the high threat of violence to civilians, the Mexican government decided to release him. The U.S., the Treasury Department has designated Ovidio, along with his brother Ivan, as key lieutenants in the Sinaloa cartel. Thus, they were declared wanted by the U.S. on drug trafficking charges. Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Ivan, the eldest son of El Chapo at 39 years old, is a significant member of Los Chapitos. He has been reportedly attempting to gain power within the Sinaloa cartel, challenging former leaders who are now rivals of the Chapitos. Conflicting reports have emerged regarding his capture during the raid that involved his brother Ovidio. In 2016, both Ivan and another brother, Alfredo, were briefly taken hostage by the rival Jalisco New Generation cartel while their father was still in prison. Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar, also known as Alfredo or Alfredillo, Jesus Alfredo is the only one of El Chapo's children to be on the Drug Enforcement Administration's most wanted list. He is believed to be running parts of the cartel alongside his brother Ivan. Jesus Alfredo is known for his lavish lifestyle, which he openly displays on social media, despite being wanted by the DEA. In 2016, he was kidnapped by the Jalisco New Generation cartel, along with Ivan, while they were being groomed for leadership roles in the cartel. Joaquin Guzman Lopez, one of El Chapo's sons, has maintained a relatively low profile compared to his brothers. However, he appears to be directly involved in cartel operations. The Department of Justice charged Joaquin, along with Ivan, with drug trafficking in February, indicating his active role within the cartel. Further details about him are scarce. Still, Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia, who previously partnered with El Chapo, remains the prominent figure in the Sinaloa cartel. But after El Chapo was extradited to the United States, the Chapitos expressed their desire to take control of the cartel. However, El Mayo prevented them from doing so, understanding that it would lead to the cartel's decimation. According to Mike Vigil, the former chief of international operations for the DEA, El Chapo's sons have never acted engaged in criminal activities. They are known for their extravagant spending, luxury cars, gold-plated AK-47S, and extravagant lifestyles. Consequently, they lack the respect of the rank-and-file members of the Sinaloa cartel. But a recent altercation has proven that, in fact, the Los Chapitos are strong and play a major role in the cartel business. This altercation was a failed operation by the police in Culiacan, Mexico, to capture Ovidio Guzman Lopez, one of El Chapo's sons. The operation resulted in a violent shootout between Mexican authorities and cartel members, leading to Ovidio's temporary capture and subsequent release. It was reported that local police, lacking military support, were ill-equipped to handle the firefight. The capture and release of another of El Chapo's sons, Ivan Archivaldo Guzman, remain unconfirmed amidst the chaotic situation. Nonetheless, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was later captured in January 2023 and is still in custody. Enadina Arellano Felix Born into a treacherous world of narco-trafficking, Enadina Arellano, Felix's life was destined to be anything but ordinary. From the sun-soaked streets of Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico, she emerged as a force to be reckoned with, surrounded by a family immersed in the dangerous trade. Her bloodline was tainted by the dark allure of drugs and power. In her youth, Enadina dreamed of becoming the Mazatlan Carnival Queen a symbol of grace and elegance. But fate had other plans in store. The shadows cast by her brothers, Ramon and Benjamin, loomed large as they became prime targets of both the United States and Mexican governments, their names synonymous with drug dealings and destruction. So at that time, she pursued knowledge and dedicated her time to her studies. And by the time she was done, she had earned a prestigious accounting degree. Little did she know that this foundation would become the cornerstone of her rise to power. By the 1980s, she got into the family business and realized how much her expertise with numbers would help her. Money laundering became her domain, a dark art that Enadina mastered with a calculated finesse. With the fall of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, the founder of the infamous Guadalajara cartel and a relative of her brother's, the Tijuana cartel was born, a new chapter in Mexico's history of organized crime. 
Hailing from the Arellano Felix bloodline, the Tijuana cartel emerged as a monstrous force, a grotesque titan in the world of illicit activities. Enedina swiftly ascended the ranks, orchestrating intricate financial schemes and maneuvering the cartel's fortunes. She became the puppet master, pulling strings and guiding the clandestine empire further ahead. But tragedy struck. Death and imprisonment ripped through her family, leaving a void that only Enedina could fill. With the arrest of her brother Eduardo, the Tijuana cartel needed a new leader, and she eagerly accepted it. In a realm dominated by ruthless men, Enedina stood as a beacon of intellect and cunning. Her education, her keen mind, and her unwavering determination set her apart from her brothers. The cartel whispered her name in awe and respect, labeling her La Jefa, a fitting tribute to the indomitable boss she had become. Unlike her predecessors, Enadina shunned the path of violence. She operated with a surgeon's precision, evading the spotlight while forging alliances with other criminal organizations. Her empire thrived in the shadows, a symphony of illicit transactions and covert maneuvers that ensured its survival. Even the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Mexican media acknowledged the rarity of Enadina's position. She was one of the few women to helm a drug cartel, a testament to her unyielding spirit and unrelenting drive. Her connections with Colombian drug suppliers remained a close guarded secret, a lifeline that sustained her organization's operations in the face of relentless opposition. Enadina Arellano Felix, a name etched in blood and power, epitomized the chilling allure of the criminal underworld, a mastermind, a strategist. She rewrote the rules and emerged triumphant in a malevolent world that sought to crush her. Her story, an embodiment of resilience and audacity, continues to captivate those brave enough to delve into the depths of her gripping saga. Ismael Zambada, El Mayo. From the humble origins of a farmer in Culiacan, Mexico, Ismael Zambada Garcia was destined for a life of audacious criminality. Born in 1948 in the tight-knit community of Alamo, he embarked on his illicit journey at the tender age of 16, venturing into the treacherous world of drug dealing. Starting small, Ismael gradually climbed the ranks, forging alliances and amassing power. His name became entwined with the notorious Guadalajara Cartel, an organization that held the reins of the drug trade dominating the lucrative routes between Mexico and the United States. They were the puppet masters of an empire built on vice and destruction. But the tides of fortune turned when Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, the enigmatic founder known as El Padrino or The Godfather, fell into the clutches of American authorities in 1989. The arrest sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, leaving a power vacuum and igniting a brutal feud among the remaining drug lords. The Guadalajara cartel, once an indomitable force, crumbled into fragments. From the ashes emerged the Sinaloa cartel, a phoenix born of chaos and ambition. Ismael Zambada, known as El Mayo, and the infamous El Chapo took the reins, rebuilding an empire fueled by violence, intimidation, and the insatiable hunger for profit. With each passing year, the Sinaloa cartel soared to new heights, becoming a multi-billion dollar behemoth that knew no boundaries. Ismael's iron grip extended far beyond the drug trade. He held the strings of power, manipulating even the Sinaloan police to dance to his tune. He was the embodiment of ruthlessness and cunning, a mastermind orchestrating a symphony of crime. To secure his dominion, alliances were forged and broken. Bloodshed became commonplace. The late 1990s marked a turning point for Ismael Zambada. Fuentes, his longtime partner, met his demise, and Zambada swiftly absorbed his faction, the Amado Carrillo Fuentes organization, also known as the Juarez Cartel, into the ever-expanding Sinaloa Cartel. It was a time of darkness and turmoil, where families were torn apart and pain reverberated through the hearts of many. Through it all, Ismael emerged as a dominant force, a figure to be feared and revered. The years rolled on, and Ismael remained a fugitive, eluding capture, while his partner in crime, El Chapo, faced the clutches of the law multiple times. The Sinaloa Cartel's elusive leader embraced a life of secrecy, rarely venturing into the public eye. One solitary interview with the Mexican magazine Proceso in 2010 offered a glimpse into his shadowy existence. Living in constant fear of capture, Ismael revealed the depths of his knowledge of the land, the mountains, the streams, the very essence of his sanctuary. His ability to blend into the wilderness made him an elusive target, a phantom lurking beyond the reach of authorities. Only by remaining vigilant and never succumbing to complacency, he believed, could he escape the fate that befell El Chapo. 
Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes El Mencho. Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, known as El Mencho, is a notorious figure in the world of drug trafficking. He originates from the Tierra Caliente region in the state of Michoacan, Mexico. According to information released by the U.S. Treasury Department, in April 2015, El Mencho has been involved in significant drug trafficking activities since the 1990s. In 1994, El Mencho was sentenced to three years in prison by the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California for his involvement in a heroin distribution conspiracy. After serving his sentence, he returned to Mexico and briefly worked as a police officer in Cabo Corrientes and Tomatlan in Jalisco. However, he eventually left the police force to pursue his drug trafficking activities and became associated with the Milenio Cartel. By 2010, after the death of Nacho Coronel and the capture of Milenio Cartel leader Oscar Orlando Nava Valencia, alias El Lobo, the Milenio Cartel split into two rival factions, Los Torchidos and La Resistencia. These factions engaged in a fierce battle for control over drug trafficking in Jalisco. Eventually, Los Torcidos evolved into the present-day Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, with El Mencho assuming leadership. Under El Mencho's leadership, the CJNG embarked on an expansion and consolidation strategy, seeking to control drug trafficking in Jalisco and surrounding states. They engaged in conflicts with rival cartels, such as the Zetas and Knights Templar. In August 2012, despite initial reports of his capture, El Mencho managed to escape an operation carried out by Mexican security forces against the CJNG in Guadalajara. The cartel deployed numerous roadblocks and set fire to vehicles on key roads in the city to impede the police's work and provide time for its members to flee. The CJNG is a major player in the methamphetamine trade in these states. El Mencho is also believed to have ordered several assassinations of Mexican politicians. In March 2013, a suspect involved in the murder of Jalisco's tourism secretary, Jesus Gallegos Alvarez, claimed that El Mencho authorized the hit due to suspicions that the official was associated with the Knights Templar cartel. The CJNG is also believed to be behind the assassination of Congressman Gabriel Gomez Michel in September 2014. While the motive for this killing remains unclear, Michel was a former mayor of El Grulo, a CJNG stronghold in Jalisco State, where El Mencho reportedly moves around freely. The CJNG, led by El Mencho, has had a significant alliance with the Quinas, a family clan headed by Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, who is the brother of El Mencho's wife, Rosalinda. The Quinas played a crucial role in helping the CJNG launder its substantial profits. Initially, the CJNG's primary enemies were the Zetas and the Knights Templar. However, as the CJNG expanded its control over Mexico's criminal landscape, it accumulated more adversaries. Its primary enemy now is the Sinaloa cartel, with whom it contends for control over cocaine and fentanyl trafficking routes across central and northern Mexico. Battles between the two cartels have resulted in numerous casualties, and new areas of violence regularly emerge. Recently, the state of Zacatecas has become a focal point of Sinaloa CJNG violence, as both groups seek to expand their control over fentanyl trafficking. The clashes have even extended as far as the Riviera Maya on the Caribbean coast, where drug trafficking and extortion in the tourism industry have been increasing. Furthermore, the CJNG is involved in various regional conflicts, including with the Northeast Cartel in Tamaulipas, the Old School Zetas in Veracruz, and the Santa Rosa de Lima Cartel in Guanajuato. The power of the Santa Rosa de Lima Cartel has largely been diminished through the CJNG's actions. One particularly intense conflict involves the southwestern state of Michoacan. This state is significant Significant due to its all-important port of Lazaro Cardenas, drug production and trafficking activities, and other criminal economies, such as avocado production and extortion. The CJNG has made Mikoacan a priority target, considering it both strategically important and El Mencho's birthplace. However, the group has encountered strong opposition from well-organized and firmly entrenched local criminal groups determined to keep them out. The main opposition in Michoacan consists of the Cartelis Unidos, or United Cartels, a coalition of criminal gangs that includes the Cartel de Tepelcatepec and the Viagras. Now we've learned about some brutal cartel leaders in this video. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then hit the next one showing on your screen because there we take it all to the next level.